What's going on guys? Jacob here and it's been a while since I've done one of these videos so today we're going to be talking about measuring hypertrophy and I'm going to give you guys some practical recommendations that won't break your bank accounts to ensure that you're making gains and you can actually quantify uh, and see whether or not you are getting bigger. So firstly there are many ways that we can measure uh, our body composition and some of the common ones are skin folds, DEXA, you know, bod pods, uh, BIAs, all the rest of it. But I just want to point out to you that the most common means of assessing body composition is the DEXA scan. It's become extremely popular of late and people are looking to the DEXA to see whether or not uh, they're getting bigger and their fat-free mass is increasing. However, my man James Krieger did a great uh, article series on his website Weightology Weekly on various techniques in assessing body composition and he spoke specifically of the DEXA and said that it's, it's like the weatherman predicting the weather. The weatherman doesn't measure the weather, it's simply a prediction. And in summary, most of the techniques uh, that he looked at, which are all the ones that I mentioned, have an error margin of approximately 10%, which is absolutely huge. So when we're trying to quantify detectable changes in skeletal muscle mass, um, it's going to be very difficult using these kind of metrics. Um, and there are a number of considerations when you do use them, such as keeping the conditions the same, you know, the frequency and time between measurements, and obviously uh, the accuracy of that technique itself. So all in all, detecting skeletal muscle uh, hypertrophy is very difficult, um, no matter what the assessment tool. So my recommendations are number one, your scale weight. So use your scale weight. You should be looking to gain weight uh, according to your level of advancement. Um, obviously the rate of gain should get slower as you advance because you're not gonna be able to build as much muscle and any rapid weight gain is essentially going to be uh, fat. So you wanna be looking at averages over the course of weeks and months and obviously the rate of gain will slow down uh, the more you lift. Number two is looking at your body composition. Now, I'm not talking about a DEXA scan per se, but how you look at a certain body weight. Now, if you're phasing your diets properly and you're going through various stages of massing, you know, mini cuts, you might have fat loss phases in there, maintenance, all the rest of it, what you want to see over time is your body composition improving at a given body weight. And I'll use myself as an example. The first time I reached 85 kilos, I was quite sloppy. Um, the second time I reached 85 kilos, and you know, top abs were visible. And then now I sit at 85 kilos, and I've pretty much got a full six pack. So, you know, that's a pretty good sign that I'm building muscle. And we can see that over time, uh, the heavier I can get at you know a certain body composition, the more muscle I have built. Now, number three is your repetition strength across multiple sets on key lifts and accessory exercises. Now, number one, we need to pick key lifts because it allows for some consistency uh, for certain movement patterns um, that we can assess whether or not those muscle groups are getting better in the gym, and that's a pretty good proxy for hypertrophy for our repetition strength, so from you know the, the five plus rep range uh, on those big lifts is getting better, then we're gonna be building muscle because that cancels out the neural adaptations. But if we're not keeping those movements consistent or at least within our program uh, over the course of years and we're not seeing those improvements, it's gonna be very hard to assess if exercises are constantly changing. Now, within that, we also need to pay attention to our isolation exercises as improvements on our isolation exercises is highly gonna to correlate to that specific muscle group. And if we're seeing our performance improve uh, on say a bicep curl, well, we know with a great amount of certainty that our biceps are getting bigger because they're the only muscle that's contributing to that. Now, I will say on that, your technique must be standardized. As always, you want to be lifting with timeless form. And also, we want to make sure that when we're reaching these uh, repetition PBs, it's not just for one set, but it's through multiple sets the session and the week. And more importantly, we need to be looking at the amount of volume that we're training with when we hit these PBs because what we can do, and what I've seen a lot of people do, is artificially uh, create performance improvements by manipulating volume. That is, they take extra rest days, you know, before a big session where they're set to hit a PB, or they, you know, they deload, they taper, they drop volume, all the volume within their cycle 
is significantly less than previous cycles. And this is really important because if we look to the fitness and fatigue model, we know that over the course of a mesocycle, our fitness climbs, as does fatigue, especially in the case of uh, training for body, bodybuilding and muscle growth because our effort's going to increase over time and we're not really going to taper our volume down like powerlifters do. But if we drop our volume, uh, we're going to see the gap between fitness and fatigue increase and that is our ability to perform. So we're going to see some marketing increases in our performance if we just drop the volume and you know, obviously our performance will, will skyrocket and that could uh, you know, really muddy the water in terms of our assessment as to whether performance in the gym is improving in a manner that's going to correlate to muscle growth. And number four is your progress pictures. Because at the end of the day, even if your scale weight's climbing, uh, you're looking better at a certain body weight, and your repetition strength across multiple sets is increasing, if you're not filling out t-shirts, you're not looking bigger in the key muscle groups that you want to be looking bigger in, um, and if you're a competitive athlete and you're not getting better each time you step on stage, uh, then what's it all for? It doesn't matter. So use those four tools uh, to assess your physique. Uh, and the way that I do this in practice with myself and my clients is I take my scale weights uh, each day and I assess the averages over the weeks and the months, obviously. I take progress pictures, front side and back, and I track my workouts and I'm looking at those key lifts over time and I record at the end of each cycle uh, the volume that I was using and you know my performance with those volumes on certain lifts and I just assess and compare back a bit of a reflection to see whether or not I've made progress. So guys I hope that video was useful, I hope it was informative, I haven't done one of these for quite some time so if you have questions feel free to ask, if you have suggestions for other topics you want me to discuss feel free to comment below and I'll speak to you all next time.